How's it going everybody? My name is Warner Fields of Fields of Profit. I'm a six-figure Amazon seller and full-time student and in today's video I'm going to be diving into repricing. i uh, give you some pointers on what to do with your repricers. Um, if you don't already have a repricer, uh, this is going to kind of convince you to get a repricer hopefully. Um, it's going to be a big step for boosting your sales just because it's going to keep you in the buy box. Um, the repricer I use is called Be Cool. Um, I also used Reprice it when I was first starting out and found that Be Cool is just a little bit better. Um, Reprice it's maybe a little more basic. It's also a little bit cheaper. So if you're first starting out, you can check that out. But I really like Be Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you my repricing rules, um, kind of some logic behind it, and then that's going to be the video. Before we start, I just want to say that only about 25% of the people watching my videos are actually subscribed. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click the button down below. Uh, that's free, it helps me out a ton, and you can always just unsubscribe. Thanks guys. So when you first log in to Be Cool, this is what it's going to look like right here. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of different uh, options up here. You're going to go here to go to your listings, uh, and there you're going to change your prices and stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and dive into repricing rules real quick, and then I'll show you how to use those in just a second. Um, so I make my own custom rules. They also have these that are default. So I'm just going to go ahead and walk you through the repricing rules that I use um, and feel free to copy these. Uh, that's not really going to affect me at all and uh, I've kind of toyed around with it a little bit so you can start from here and mess with it however you want. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things you can do um, and this is the one that I apply to all of my FBA offers pretty much. Um, I have one exception that I'll show you in just a second. <clears throat> but you're going to go ahead and compare it to Amazon FBA and the non-featured FBA. Um, your seller fulfilled prime doesn't super matter I just set it as FBM these you can exclude whatever seller you want so maybe if you're a big bookseller and you want to exclude like Jensen books or any of the big mega sellers uh, so you don't tank on those uh, that's something you could do there you could add those seller IDs I haven't really messed with that before uh, these are just free shipping expedited shipping but it's gonna adjust those prices depending on the shipping already um, I like to exclude sellers with less than 80% and 0% or in zero feedback because uh, those people aren't likely to get buy box anyway so if you you are repricing against them, you might be sacrificing uh, profit for no reason. Uh, you're also going to want to exclude sellers with backordered product um, because that's going to um, exclude those sellers who maybe this product isn't going to be in stock for another two weeks. Amazon's not usually going to give those people buy box rotation if your stuff is already in stock, so there's no reason to compete with those people. Um, and then these, uh, you can do this if they have like a long handling time. Um, you can also set item condition, um, but this kind of does that automatically for you already. So we're just going to go ahead and press next. Um, so right here, so when you set your prices in Be Cool, you're going to give it a range, which I'll show you in just a second. But this is going to tell it what it what you want to do when it's in that range. So if it finds competition between your range, um, this is the rule that it's going to use. Um, so what I like to do is set it equal to the competitor's price. Um, some people like to race to the bottom, do minus one penny here. Um, but all that's gonna do is send everyone's prices tanking because everyone's got a repricer. Um, so if you're gonna do negative one penny, then the reprice is gonna go negative one penny, and then you're just gonna race to the bottom, and you're gonna lose all your profit. It also used to be the case that the buy box was based almost solely on price, um, and nothing else really mattered, but they changed the buy box algorithm back uh, several months ago now um, to where other factors matter a lot more than price. Um, so you can be within a pretty significant little margin and still get the buy box even if your price is higher. So if you're undercutting those people by a penny, um, that might not even give you buy box rotation, and then you're gonna cut everyone's profitability, and you're not even going to get the buy box like you think you are. Um, so in those cases, when you need to get the when you need to pr cut the price to get that buy box rotation, you're going to want to cut it by a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, um, a bit a more major price jump that maybe a repricer isn't going to follow you down to, um, so that you can go ahead and get that rotation. Um, but if you're just doing little micro adjustments, you're likely to not get the buy box, especially against sellers with a lot of feedback rating. Um, so that's the main reason why I match. And then when I have to go cut prices, I'll go and manually do it by, um, like I said, do it by like a, a bigger price jump because then maybe they're not going to follow you and then you're actually going to get that buy box rotation rather than just like incrementing down and then you lose that option to cut your price because you're already at the bottom and you didn't get rotation on the way down. So this one right here uh, says when competitor is below the minimum price, uh, it's going to use auto compete or you can set it to the minimum price, whatever you want to do. Um, but this is what this is going to do is like it says here. So say one person's at ten dollars, uh, you got your minimum at eleven, and then there's a bunch of people in that range between eleven and fifteen. Um, it's going to go ahead and compete with those sellers in your range rather than go all the way to the bottom because say competitor one maybe if it's books maybe competitor one has an acceptable copy. 
um, and then you're going to go to 11, and then maybe they would want an acceptable or a better than acceptable copy, say you have good, and the 12 is also good. Rather than selling it at that minimum price of 11, you can actually get that sale at 12. So there's no real reason to follow those people all the way to the bottom. Um, you can I prefer to compete within the range that I've already set, um, but you can do whatever you want there. That's just what I do. Um, and then when it equals the minimum price, I just use minimum price because I'm matching their price anyway. So when it finds prices outside your minimum and maximum, uh, if they're above the max, I just set it to the maximum price. A lot of times if they're above the max, it's like an unrealistic price or uh, maybe they're drop shipping or just get bad, bad prices on that item. Um, so you're going to just go ahead and set it to that max price. So you're just going to calculate that ahead of time when you first set your prices. So then you don't want those sales velocity to slow down because if the price goes way up, you're probably not going to get the sales. Um, and then the same when it goes below minimum. Um, and no one else is there, I'll just go to minimum and I'll be above everyone else and then hopefully those people will sell out and then it'll be at that minimum price and I'll be able to sell it there. Um, and then if they're all below minimum price and above max, I just go to minimum um, because that means there's those people below minimum. Uh, so I'm going to set it to minimum and then if those minimum people sell out, then it'll go back up to that max anyway and then we'll be back in this situation again. When I'm the only seller, I just want to use that max price. Same reason I just talked about. You don't want your sales velocity to slow down just because you're the only person on the listing. Maybe you can get a little bit more profit out of there, but you don't want to get too greedy with it. So you're just going to use your max price. And then this one right here is just kind of a catch-all in case maybe something messes up or it's excluded by, like it says, excluded by your settings. I just don't reprice it. It'll probably be sitting at that minimum price or maximum price, whatever uh, kind of weird scenario happened here. Uh, this probably doesn't happen too frequently, but it's just like a nice little safety net here. Uh, this price change safety net, you can set it so that... Um, you never change your price more than a certain percentage. I don't super see the point in this if I'm already doing the calculations when I'm setting my prices. Um, I'm okay with it changing anywhere in that range. Um, but if you want to be more careful with your price price adjustments, you can definitely throw like a 10% or even like a 5% in there. Um, just to make sure you're not cutting or raising too much at a time. Um, but I would I would recommend that you do your calculations beforehand so you shouldn't need that. And then down here, I only want my FBA to compete with FBA offers. I don't typically compete with Amazon uh, just because they don't share buy box rotation very often. And then I also use this on my FBM listings. So I only want those FBM competing with those FBM listings. Um, you could go ahead and throw it on this FBA here. Maybe as a catch all, I'll just go ahead and do that right now, honestly. Um, and then you're just going to go ahead and click next. Um, you're just going to choose your competitors here. Again, it's the FBA like it was. So this is what it's going to do when you're in the buy box. The last step is to get the buy box. Um, and then when you're in the buy box, I don't really want to change. I just want to keep the buy box where it is. I don't want to mess with um, anything that's going on. You can set like a schedule. Otherwise, it's going to go ahead and reprice every 15 minutes, I think is what Be Cool does. Some of them are instant, but those are going to be really expensive. And then others like reprice it are all schedule based. So you're going to have to manually go ahead and set up every time you want it to reprice, which is another reason why I like Be Cool. It's just a little more reactive. So you're going to catch those sales in between the times where other people might be using reprice it a couple times a day. Uh, Be Cool is going to go ahead and do it a lot more often. And then when you get to this last step here, you're just going to click save and finish. Um, and then when you go ahead and apply that to your listings, uh, it's going to go ahead and run that rule just like I showed you. So let's go ahead and I'll just show you what one listing looks like over here. So here, once you're actually looking at your listings, these are just some old listings that I had um, from a while back. Uh, right here, you can see all the information about it. You got your SKU, you got the condition it is. Um, you can click through here to go to the actual Amazon page. Um, and then over here is where you got cost. If you use Inventory Lab, you can sync the two together and then it will do the profit calculations over here using those numbers from Inventory Lab. And then right here, this min price and max price is where you're going to go ahead and set the range that you want the, the book to be or whatever you're selling to be priced between. Um, and then to set these prices, you're just going to look at keepographs, um, kind of determine where you want that item to sell. If you're doing OA or wholesale, you kind of already know where this is going to be. Uh, for books, this range is going to be a lot wider. Um, then maybe a wholesale product where you're just going to fluctuate between a dollar or two books are going to be, you know, up to like a lot of these have pretty major, uh, price variations here. Um, and right here is where you're going to select your price rule. This is just a little drop down menu and you can select from all of the different options you have. Uh, this maximize profit rule is this one that I just made. Um, and then right here is where it's going to show you your price. And then it even shows you if you're in the buy box over here. Really the hardest part of all this is just learning where to set your minimum and maximum price uh, and that's just going to come with experience, learning how to read those Keepa charts, especially for books, learning Keepa charts is going to be a lot more important for setting these prices. OA and wholesale not going to fluctuate a whole bunch. 
um, but I'm also going to go ahead and show you a couple different repricing rules that I've also built. Um, this one I use every now and then uh, when a product, when I have a product where Amazon comes on the listing, that's why I called that um, the unfortunate situation where you're probably just going to lose a bunch of money. Um, this is all pretty much the same, uh, except right when we get in here, it's just going to, you're just going to press FBA versus Amazon. Uh, and then right here, I've got it minus 1%. You could even jack this up even more. Uh, you probably wouldn't get buy box rotation a whole bunch against Amazon with minus 1%. So next time I need to use this rule, I'd probably make that 5% or even more maybe. Um, and then Amazon's likely to race you to the bottom. Uh, but if you're stuck under, under a listing with, with Amazon on it, uh, you're, you probably already know you're just going to lose a little bit of money there. Um, so you could just cut majorly and see if Amazon just waits for you to sell out but a lot of times they will follow you that's just got a, a risk you got to take this is the same um, and then this you could also set up a schedule here and all that um, but yep yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and save and finish and then I do also have an FBM pricing rule uh, right here that I can go ahead and show you basically the same thing um, you're just gonna select everything uh, you can set this up however you want I've got this one a little bit higher because uh, FBM likes to give those rotation even more to higher rated sellers. It makes sense because if you're Amazon, you want those sellers with uh, a little more reputable uh, feedback to be getting the sales just so you're protecting uh, the customer. Um, again, all this stuff is about the same, minus zero. And then in down here, you're just going to press FBM instead of the FBA like we did earlier. Uh, we're going to go on and then we're just going to press save like we did before. So if you're on the fence about getting a repricer, I would definitely encourage you to do so. Uh, you will see a big increase in your sales. If you're using a different repricer, I'd encourage you to try out Be Cool. I really like it. It's good for the price you pay for it. There's better stuff out there. There's worse, but in the in the price point it's at, I think it's really good. Uh, if you want to go ahead and check it out, there's going to be a link below. Um, that helps me out as well. And I think you get a free trial or something with that as well. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. Uh, drop a like, subscribe, whatever. Uh, if you found any value in this video, um, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks, guys.